guys, welcome back to XX Wiki, your knowledge channel. So today we're going to be speaking about the Mende people of Sierra Leone. So don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And let's begin with the video. <laughs> The Mendi are one of the two largest ethnic groups in Sierra Leone. Their neighbors, the Temni people, have roughly the same population. Mendi people account for slightly more than 30% of the total population. The Mendi are found in the southern province and the eastern province, while the Temni are found primarily in the northern province and the western area including the capital city of Freetown. Many of the major cities with significant Mende populations include Bo, um, Kenama, Kalehan, and Mayamba. Um, the Mendes also belong to a larger group of Mende languages who live throughout West Africa. And the Mende are mostly farmers and hunters. For example, the Mendes people that we already spoke about in my channel are the Mandinkas, the Bambaras, and the, Sana the Sanaki. So if you're interested in learning about those um, those groups, I can put the videos in the description bar for you guys to check out. One, two, three, four, nine. So the Mende speak the Mende languages among others but their language is also spoken as a regional lingo franca by members of a smaller Sierra Leone ethnic groups that inhabit the small part of the country. Their language is spoken by around 46% of Sierra Leone's population and also Mende language is widely spoken in Liberia, more so in areas once considered part of Liberia. So the Mendes are divided into Kappa Mende who are in the south and like cities like in Mayomba district and then they have the Gola Mende so from the Gola forest between the cities of Keneme and Pojinhan districts which goes into Liberia and then they have the Sewa Mende so who settled along the Sewa river then they have the Ve Mende also in Liberia and the Pojinhan district um, Sierra Leone and the Kohe Mende, who are the dominant tribe in Kalenhon district, with the Kesi and the Gobandi, both of whom are in Liberia, Sierra Leone, and Guinea. The secret Poro society is for the men, while Sandy society is for women, both of whom initiate the young into adulthood. Those who join either of the male or female secret societies are referred to as the Halomo, which is members of the Halo or secret societies. The Mende believe that humistic and scientific power is passed down through the secret societies. The Mende traditionally live in villages of 70 to 250 residents, which are situated from 1.5 to 5 kilometers apart. There is little or no machinalization over the greater part of rural Mende County. Mende farmers use hoes and machetes, but few other mach um, few other tools. The Mende are generally known as growers of rice and several other crops, which practice crop um, rotation. <laughs> In the Poro society, the greatest sin a Mende man can commit is to give away the secrets of their tribe. So during their training, the initiators learn everything that is essential to the survival of the community. The process is described as being reborn, transformed, and enduring a masquerade as being as being rejuvenated into fully socialized adult men. And in the Sandy society, all Mende women when they reach puberty, begin the initiation process into the Sandy society. The goals of the secret society are to teach young Mende women the responsibilities of adulthood. The girls are taught to be hardworking and modest in their behavior, especially towards their elders. Sandy influences every aspect of a Mende woman's life. It is present before birth and is still present after. 
Sandy is a guardian of women, their protector and guide through life. It is Sandy that gr grants a woman with an identity and a personality. The Sandy society is considered is uh, concerned with defining what is what it is to be human and with discovering the ways of promoting love, justice, and harmony. It is a moral philosophy that focuses on the refinement of the individual. So much Monday art is in the form of jewelry and carvings. The mask associated with the fraternal and sorority associations, associations of the Maraca, Marca and the Mendes are probably the best known and finally crafted in the region. The Mendi also produce beautifully woven fabrics which are popular throughout Western Africa and gold and silver necklaces, bracelets, armlets and earrings. The bells on the necklaces are the type believed capable of being heard by spirits bringing in both worlds, that of the ancestors and the living. Mende hunters often wear a single bell that can be easily silenced with seeth necessary. Women on the other hand often wear multiple bells referring to the concepts of community since the bells ring harmoniously, harmoniously together. So masks are the collective mind of Mende community. Viewed as one body, they are the, spirit of, they are the spirits of the Mende people. The Mende mask figures are a reminder that human beings have a dual existence. They live in the concrete world of, fe of uh, they live in the concrete world of flesh and material things, and the spirit of dreams, faith, aspirations, and imagination. The features of a Mende mask convey Mende ideals of female morality and physical beauty. They are unusual because the masks are only worn by women. The bird on the top of the head represents a woman's natural in intuition that lets her see and know things that others can't. The high or broad forehead represents good luck or the sharp. Good luck or the sharp mind of the ideal Mende woman. Downca downcast eyes symbolize a spiritual nature and it is through these small slits that a woman wearing this mask would look out of it. The small mouth signifies the ideal woman's quiet and humble character. The markings on the cheeks are representative of the decorative scars girls receive as they step into womanhood. The scars are a symbol of her new, harder life. The neck rolls are an indication of the health of an ideal woman. They have also been called symbols of the pattern of concentric circular ripples the Mende spirit makes when emerging from the water. In the Mende culture, full-figured women are beautiful. The, the interact hairstyles reveal the close ties within the community of a woman. The holes at the base of the mask are where the rest of the costume is attached. A woman who wears these masks must not expose any part of her body or a, vent, or a ventful spirit may take possession of her. Women often cover their bodies with masks of uh, raffia or black cloth. When a girl becomes initiated into the sandy society, the village's master woodcrafter creates a special mask just for her. Helen masks are made from a section of tree trunk, often of the cotton tree and then carved and hollowed to fit over the wearer's head and face. The woodcrafter must wait until he has a dream that guides him to make the mask a certain way for the recipient. A mask must be kept hidden in a secret place when no one is wearing it. These masks appear not only in intuition um, rituals but also at important events such as funerals, abbreviations, and installations of sheaves. The traditional character of, of Gonde is also a nodoli joey or dance instructor, but rather than a harsh enforcer, she acts as the comic relief. Gandhi becomes a friend to the initiate, initiated, amusing them to help them forget the hard ordeals they are going through. She coaches the slower dancers, encouraging them to work hard. Gandhi is a funny, lovable character who enlightens the gloom and reminds everyone that Sandy 
is not always so deadly serious. And Andoli Joey is the principal spirit for celebration. Although she appears on other occasions besides celebrations, in Sandy's intuition, there are three major events in which the Andoli appear publicly. The first appears one to three days after the, initi after the initiations have been taken into the bush to be circumcised. This event is called Yaya um, Beg 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 At this time, the Andoli comes into town with a group of sandy women while the initiators stay in the bush recovering from their operations. The women come into town to tell men that they have initiated people into Sandy. They go through the town waving leaves and gathering food and other supplies that they need. And Doli does not dance in this occasional because it is not yet time for celebration. She is only there as a reminder of the powerful medicine which has been summoned by the Sandy section. This invalidates the unruly behavior of the Sandy woman. The next time Andoli appears is at a minor feast called Kepete Bula Yobolo Li Osowo Emba Jibai. At this occasion, an announcement is made to inform people of the date for the, cele for the Gani celebration, which is the last event of the Sani initiation that Andoli appears at. At this time, the new initiations a new, the new initiations are brought into town for the first time since the intonation process began accompanied by Andoli. This is a happy occasion where dances are performed by both the maskers and the initiators. Hojo is a white clay that Mende women use to mark their territories. The clay comes from the water like many other aspects of Sandy. Its smooth, shiny surface reflects light, making it eye catching. Hojo is found in the scale of colors from beige to pure white. The pure white Hojo is rare, found only deep beneath the surface of the water. Hojo and Sandy are parallel in the way they are both well hidden and secretive in its purest form. White is the color of Sandy. To the Mende, the pureness of white signifies the cleanness and absence of imperfections. It shows, it shows our, um, our harmlessness. It is void of all things evil and is thus a positive and helpful color. White is symbolized, symbolic of the spirit world and also of the secret parts of society where people aim for the highest standards. Objects and people who are marked with hojo are under Sande protection and control. They are subject to the authority of Sandy law and punishment. Initiates are colored with this white clay to show that they are the property of Sandy. This signifies that they are under the protection of Sandy and she should not be fooled with. So we, the judge of women, wears white to represent clear thinking and justice. Okay, so I think we're almost done here. So we're going to talk about um, slavery, which it was involved with the... Uh, Mende people and into the Americas and the South Americas. Regional welfare throughout the 19th century led to the capture and sale of many Mende speakers into slavery. Most were found abroad from the Amistad in 1839. They eventually won their freedom and were repatriated. This event involved 52 free Mende people stolen by the Portuguese slavers in 1839 who were shipped via the Middle Passage to Havana, Cuba, where they were sold to Cuban sugar plantation owners Jose Ruiz and Pedro Montes. After working the plantain, they were placed on the schooner Amistad and shipped to another Cuban plantation. On the way, they escaped their bondage and were led in a rebellion by Sengbi Mpi Pai. They told the crew to return them to Africa. Their efforts to return home were frustrated by the ship's remaining crew, who navigated up to the United States. The ship was in Long Island, New York, by a U.S. coastal brig. The Cubans merchant Ruiz and Montes denounced the mandate and asserted that, that they were their property. 
The ensuing case heard in Hartford and New Haven, Connecticut, affirmed that the captives were free and resulted in the return of the 36 surviving men to their homes. In the Americas, especially the United States, researchers have discovered that elements of African culture had long persisted. In some areas where there were large numbers of enslaved Africans, they kept much of their heritage. In the 1930s, African-American linguistic Lorenz Dow Turner found a Gule uh, family in coastal, Georgia, in, uh, coastal Georgia that had preserved an ancient song in the Mende language called Awaka, passing it down for 200 years. In the 1900s, three modern researchers, Joseph Opella, Cynthia Sch Schmidt, and Tasfi Koroma, located in Mende village in Sierra Leone, where the same song is still sung today. Um, the story of the Mende song and the survival in both Africa and the U.S. is in the documentary film, The Language You Cry In. So if I'm able to find the documentary, I'll leave it down in the description box for you guys to check out. So that's the end of the video about the Mende people of Sierra Leone. I hope you guys enjoyed it so much. And don't forget to like, 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 and comment on this video, guys. And don't forget to subscribe. But yeah, guys, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.